Hi, Terry. How are you today? I'm going to wait just a couple more minutes, see if some other people find me. Sometimes it's a technical challenge to get logged in and everything. Oh, looks like people are coming on. I know, Sharon. Two times in a row. Woohoo! Hi, Ronnie. Again, I should say. All right. Let's see. We'll wait just a couple more seconds, people. I have a lot of housekeeping stuff tonight. Okay, well, I guess people are busy. So most of you know that this is the hostess code for October. So if you're placing an order that's less than $150, please use this hostess code. Um, if it's over $150, you do not need a hostess code. We only have a couple more days to be able to order this month's paper pumpkin kit. It is going to be Christmas cards, so if you'd like to order it, uh, you could do so directly online, or you can private message me, and I can order one extra kit for you. Okay, that's the paper pumpkin. And then you probably saw my post. Uh, I can't remember exactly what day it was, but I have another upcoming uh, product share. Uh, this past month in September, I did two that were a huge hit. I did the plaid that was just papers and stuff, and then I did one with a stamp set. So for this month, I thought I would do a combo. So you have the option of just purchasing the paper kit part, which is some of the, um, oops, that's wrong. I forgot to change that. It's a uh, chest of Christmas. Awesome. Okay, I changed that. But you get 12 sheets of that, two yards of ribbon. I just put ribbon because there seems to be so many ribbon that's going on backwater quickly. So uh, I'd rather be able to just say ribbon. But right now my goal is this uh, pretty red like braided corded ribbon. A half a package of these beautiful red rhinestones. This is the paper. You can see it's double sided and it's very Christmassy. It uses our, our garden green, cherry cobbler, white, shaded spruce, a, a smoky slate. Some plaids again, point, um, holly berries, another plaid. Very pretty. I love this Christmas tree. And then here's another of the um, holly berries. You get six half sheets of colored cardstock, two of two, uh, shaded spruce, two cherry cobbler, and two. Uh, pumpkin but I might switch that one out and then of course six of your bases now this time I'm doing it just a tad different like I said if you want to add on the stamp set I'm going to give it to you with free shipping and free tax so the add-on would be $19 so the basic uh, paper kit is $20 and then you can add on this sweet stamp set for $19 and that will be available at the end of the month. The cutoff date for payment is like around the 21st or 22nd, something like that. So tonight is all about 3D projects. Most of you know me quite well, know that uh, I like black and white cards, and I love a challenge of creating a 3D project. So this is one of them. It's a candy box. It has two... Um, Two Tootsie Rolls like this in it. And then uh, I created a class for uh, Senior Plus here in Lewiston uh, to do on the computer. And I'm not sure if Dawn is on here. No, there's a lady that watches me. She takes those classes. So this is a Tootsie Roll Pop, this one. And then there's a cute little triangle one. 
So let's start off with the bigger one. Set this stuff aside. So this one here just takes a half a sheet of cardstock, just like we do to make our basic cards. Here's the measurements. I'll do my best to try to get them up tomorrow, but I've had such a crazy busy week. I'm so far behind in stuff. But if I don't get it up tomorrow, they will be up by the weekend. So you're going to need some type of a scoreboard or a cutter or whatever. Let me see if I can move these over so if you're writing them down. All right, so on the five and a half inch side, we're going to score at one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, and five. So we're going to turn it around and we're going to do a half inch and one and a half. And I just flip it over and do the same thing. A half inch and one and a half. Now, with this little half inch piece going towards your right, you need to find some markers here. Because we need to score this central piece right here. Hope you can see that. So... So there's 10. So I want to do 5 eighths. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I want to make a little mark right here. And then this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. About 5 eighths. So what we're going to do now to be able, I just, it's hard for you to see, but I just want to score this square and this square and on the opposite end. So I'm going to take a ruler. I'm going to score them, but I'm also going to do white so you can see it. Hold on a minute. So I'm coming from this point to that mark I made. The same here. And I'm going to take my white gel pen so you can see it. It's going to be on the inside anyways. So you go from point to point to your mark. So here you can see I drew the line. But what you do is you find your center point between these two. And it's about 5 eighths. And then you draw a line from that corner to the center, from this corner to the center. But you want to use your score tool, not draw a line. So let me score the other end. You're going to do the exact same thing. Okay. So I forgot to measure that side, so I'm just going to take my ruler. We make a little mark. The hardest part is because I'm using a dark color. I want to score that. Doesn't look like I scored that one enough. Let me come back. All I'm just going to do is take a ruler and a stylus, a bone folder, or whatever you might have. So, see, I scored them on both ends. Let me put that away so I don't lose it. And grab my bone folder, which is hiding behind here. So, I'm going to start by folding all of these The reason I'm folding one back the other way is so that I can create this little pinched piece right here. Now I'm going to start folding these long ones. I'm 
Now you can use heavy tape or you could use glue. I'm going to just start this little pinching where I made those score marks just to make it a little easier. You don't have to take your bone folder to it, but just use your finger as a guide just to get it started. So at this point, you can either use your heavy tape, which is what I'm going to use, or wet glue, or whatever your adhesive is of your choice. I probably would not use uh, a tape runner unless you have the Super Stampin' Up! Seal. Just because it's going to get a lot of friction here with uh, the candy that you select to put in there. So now I'm going to burnish this really well. So this is Wednesday night where we have a little bit more advanced stamping. And once a month I like to do uh, 3D projects. And I figured with Halloween just around the corner and we can't do social distancing, it might be fun to do some drop-off projects. So now, where this is folded in, I just need to pinch it. And I'm going to staple it shut. just want to test this one out before I put my candy in it. And it's pretty big, so you can get quite a bit in here. So again, I'm going to pinch it and staple it. I made these a few years back for those of that have been with me a little bit smaller. We made Easter eggs with them. Then I cut some of our new beautiful designer paper. It's one inch. Oops, looks like I got to cut it a little bit the other way. Let me grab my cutter really quick. I think it's supposed to be one by five. Mm, let's see. Looks like five and a half. So let's see what they are. I can. That's what's nice about our new cutter. You can cut four pieces of designer paper at the same time. So five and a half. Yeah. Now let me check them out and see how it looks. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of chombo behind it. I'm going to put one on each side. I love the spiders on this. The next two projects are super quick, too. The, any of these projects would be really good to do with some kids if you have grandchildren or maybe you watch some kids. Or I know there's a lady that's on here occasionally that's teaching sewing to somebody. She might want to make a couple of cute little projects for her little friends. Let me just grab a... I had sticky fingers. Just grab my rag here. All right, so uh, you know me, I take all kinds of tags. So this one I'm going to use this tag on. And I took a different stamp because they're probably going to go to different grandchildren. Heavens forbid should everything be exactly the same. So this one says no tricks, just treats. And then I have an old uh, bootleg bat punch that comes out out of the dust every year. And we can put that on with a little tiny glue dot. Just like that. And then I'm going to just take a couple more glue dots 
to put it on the box. And I know it's bigger than the box, but I like that. There we go. So there's project number one. Cute, huh? So the next two projects are ones that I had designed for the uh, Senior Plus here in Lewiston. So I had a couple of kits left over, so I said, ah, oh, what the heck, why not just do that? So these are super, super quick. You can get five out of one sheet of cardstock. So again, it's seven and a half by two inches. I score it at one inch, three and a half inch, and five inch. And then you need to poke a little hole in the middle. And I just used one of our tag punches to make the top of it pretty. So let me fold on these score marks. Let me flip this over in case you're trying to write down my directions. You have to pull down your paper a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. And then work this through. And then I typically put a couple of glue dots just to keep it stabilized. So I'm going to take two of these little mini glue dots with my pickup tool. And there's a bottom here. It's hard for you to see it. I'm just going to put two right next to each other. Just like that. Then I must have some ribbon here. You know what? I'm going to use a little bit. Oh, no, that's black. Let me find some ribbon. Oh, here it is. I'm just going to take a little tiny piece of ribbon. Tie it. Just in a knot. Then I'm going to take a little piece of my chair and tape. Because again, it's going to get a little bit of tugging. A little tear and tape. Bring my lollipop down so it stands up and it's on, on those glue dots. And then press that tape. Let's trim this up a little bit. You could use Velcro. You could use a pop-up. You could use a dimensional. You could use whatever you want to close it. Then I have some pre-cut stuff. So this is some old designer paper. It's so cute, huh? This one is from this year. So, Trombo to the job. This is about two inch, that one and three quarters by two inches, I believe. But again, you could put any size. You could not, you could emboss the whole thing and not put any designer paper. And then this is a, a stamp from last year's Paper Pumpkin. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It's from a stamp set. Spooky. I get my products mixed up. Then I used a uh, gorgeous grape. So there's project number two. Project number three is one that I have probably done... Oh my goodness. I bet for 20 years, different forms of it. It's a, supposed to look like a broom. I remember when my kids were little, we made some. So what this one is made out of, this time, is just a plain old coffee filter that you have for the 8 to 12 cups coffee. Now, if you don't have these brown ones, you have white ones. What happens when you make coffee? They get stained. So just rinse out the coffee. And um, I'm going to take off just a little bit. 
and let it dry out and then you could use it. So you have a tiny little hole. You have my other lollipop. Try to get it through that hole without ripping it too much. And then I just twist it around as tight as I can. Use some baker's twine or whatever you have to wrap around it. This is some of that crochet thread. It works great. So I'm just going to hold a little piece in my hand while I wrap this as tightly as I can around this. See how I'm winding it? What I have is enough on. I'm just going to tie a double knot. That's what keeps the coffee filter in place. Then you take your scissors and you can cut your broom as thick or as small as you want. You just go like that. I'm not going to sit here while you watch me. Then I just tied a bow on it and I have some pre-stamped uh, little tags here. So as you can see, if you look down, the scallop circles behind it and the words are in front of it. And I attached it with a pop-up. So that's tonight's fun, quick, easy uh, candy treat holders to make for friends or your grandchildren or people that you like to give a little something to. They're not difficult. Anybody can make them. You have all the supplies right there in your craft room or your kitchen, whichever. You can even use a brown paper bag if you wanted to for that. I've done that in the past as well. Um, so that's it for this Tonight's 3D project. This is Blackberry Bliss, this one, and then this one is uh, Rich Razzleberry. That's the difference in the colors, because somebody will probably... So that's it, people. Quick, easy, huh? Lots of fun, and I hope you make some. And if you do, please post them here so other people can see them. Or post... Um, if you make some cute treat holders, I'm always looking for new projects on how to make them. I love to make 3D stuff. So until then, I'll see you next time. Take care. Have a good evening and stay safe. Bye-bye.